I heard you came across some of Christopher Dunch's surgeries. So there were no complications? I don't have complications. The question isn't why he did it. It's how he got away with it. All due respect, Dr. Kirby, you don't understand the law. You don't understand who we're after. If you come for me, you better be ready for what I'm going to do to you. Dr. Death, a new series available 12th of September only on Stars Play. Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. We're going to dive into some of the questions around getting memoir into audio. The nature of the genre of memoir is that the text is written in the first person as your memories of your life. Because it is in first person, it brings forward some potential challenges when thinking about getting your memoir into audio, and that's what we're going to take time to cover today. We're going to look at it from two different perspectives, the author perspective and the listener perspective. For the author, there is often this perception that the author needs to narrate their own audiobook because it's written in the first person, these are your memories, and that's what makes sense. However, that's not always the case. It is not always the case that the author is the best narrator for their memoir. Let me preface this next bit with a clarification that for most listeners, when they hear the opening credits for a memoir, that it is written by one person and narrated by another, there is not a negative response to that. We expect books to be narrated by a professional narrator and While many authors do record their own audiobooks, sometimes that's a good thing, and sometimes it's not. But from the listener's perspective, it's not an automatic problem that the author is not narrating their own memoir. What they want is a great listening experience. And what happens is that as the listener starts to get into the book, they assume they're hearing it as if it is the author's voice. Coming back to the author's perspective and what the author is experiencing when they are wanting to narrate their own audiobook or think that they should, here are some of the things that will come up. And I want to head this off with this question. Are you, as author, the right voice for your own memoir? The answer is not a given. It is something to honestly explore and decide. And it's a question that you can explore and decide with an audiobook producer. You can get their help in that process of making the decision. We have worked with many authors in creating their memoirs, some of whom are the right voice for their own book and some of whom are not. And it works both ways. The big question is, has the author developed the skills needed for audiobook recording? And it is a whole very different set of skills from anything else. Very different from writing. Very different even from public speaking. Recording over a long-term project and when we're talking about several hours, which typically most audiobooks are several hours, it's important to be able to maintain a consistent quality, and that can be really hard over the long term, over several sessions. The work itself is very challenging. 
And most authors that I have talked with or worked with over the years who have decided to narrate their own often tell me afterwards that if they had had any idea how hard it was, that they wouldn't have made that choice. But it does vary because there are authors who have those skills, are really ready to dive into it and get some direction and take it to the booth and really put in the time and effort to get that job done. Some of the things that I have found most consistently to be problematic, especially challenging for authors, especially if they are new to recording, there are a few things. One of them is that there's a tendency for the voice to come out kind of flat, not maybe monotone necessarily, but much flatter than is good for a great listening experience. And I attribute that to the fact that while there is a lot going on in their own memory, in their own heads about what's happening and the scene is coming to life in their own heads, but the skill of being able to express that for audio is a skill that takes development. So that's one of the main things that I notice is this sort of flatness of tone. Many authors listening to themselves for the first time, are not particularly happy with the way that they sound. That's often true for people who hear themselves recorded for the first time, and it sounds different, and it does take some adjustment to getting used to what your voice sounds like when it is recorded. Another thing that comes up, and this one always baffles me a bit, but it's very related to the fact that Authors, as a general rule, don't have training in acting or the skills that it takes in the booth. So one of the other things that comes up a lot is not being able to really craft the sentences in recording in ways that make them fully make sense. That may sound really weird, but it's true. For example, a sentence where there's a comparative. You're talking about one thing that's different from another thing. And often there will be this, you know, a read of the sentence where the stresses aren't landing right to actually bring out that comparative structure. And I don't know whether that is simply a matter of not having these recording skills or acting skills developed in the verbal out loud expression of their story. But it's always felt a little bit odd to me because what comes across is it's almost as if they don't know their own story. And yet, of course, they do. So it's really comes back to me and it strikes me again as really it, this is just a skill. It's just a skill that needs development for whoever is going to narrate an audiobook. And similar to what I said earlier about just it being a really challenging process, what I have heard from many authors and seen as I work with them is that the actual recording process itself can be quite exhausting and challenging. For one thing, even if you're being directed on how to, say, craft a sentence or, you know, have a little more modulation in your voice, that being able to implement those directions is particularly hard, it seems, for most authors I've worked with. And that, I think, again, it's the same. It comes back to that sort of actor training, those skills that we develop. Do we, you know, can we listen to a direction and then actually implement it? And that's a, it's a hard thing. It's something, you know, again, in the actor toolbox, it's a part of what we learn in actor training and not being able to do it when you're recording your own audiobook just means that your director can only go so far with you in terms of helping you. Let's take a short pause and be right back. Here at Pro Audio Voices, we love working with authors who have a big goal in mind. They really want to reach out to their audience around the world. We're here to help make that happen. It starts with our pre-production process, where we're evaluating and determining what elements of the audiobook we can leverage to both create an excellent listener experience for your listeners 
as well as drawing them to your website to engage with you further. It continues on through the production process, making decisions that will enhance and support your big goals, as well as creating a great listener experience. But we don't stop there. Once the audiobook is live, we move on to helping you market your audiobook with the Audiobook Marketing Program. Come check us out at ProAudioVoices.com. To schedule a call to talk about your audiobook project, click on Get Started. Now let's turn and look at the question of having someone else, a professional narrator, narrate your audiobook, your memoir. One of the biggest challenges that comes up in this world is finding the voice that feels like the right voice. Here are some of the pieces of that puzzle. The first is, if you're trying to find a voice that sounds like you, the way you sound to yourself, you basically have an impossible task. Each of us sound different, and we need to go into that process acknowledging that. And rather than just trying to find somebody that sounds like you, which isn't possible, then we want to think about what are the qualities of your voice or your speech patterns or whatever that are important to you. Now, here's a thing to remember. Your writing itself dictates the way that person is going to read it. So if you have written in a way that you speak, in terms of your own speech patterns, your now it, this is not, of course, quality of voice, but if your speech patterns, the way that you would phrase a sentence, if you've written it that way, it's going to be much easier for your narrator to actually read it that way. That script is their guide as to how to approach the material. When you're looking for that voice, you may decide that you want somebody who has at least a similar quality to yours. Now, that could be any number of things. If you have a very breathy voice, then you may want somebody with a breathy voice. If you have a more crackly voice, an older sounding voice, you may want something like that. If you have a deeper voice, you may be looking for someone with a deeper voice. Regardless of what quality you're looking for, if there is something about your voice that feels like, I need that quality, then identify that and work with your producer to keep that in mind in the casting process. And I wouldn't lean too heavily on that or rely too much on that because what's most important in every audiobook, in my opinion, is the quality of the storytelling. If the narrator is engaging the listener in the story, that's what matters most. And so you always want to be looking for a great storyteller who can tell your story well. Another aspect that I mentioned earlier of your voice that you might want to consider is listening how the narrator reads your text in terms of their speech patterns. And that can be more with things like inflection, the kinds of stresses that they put on the sentence, something that feels like it fits with your text is what you would want to be aiming for. But again, leaving room for your producer, your casting director to help you find a voice that is just a great storyteller for your particular story. One of the things that can really help you in the process of finding that voice, and then later actually in reviewing your audio, is to do your very best to put yourself in the listener's shoes. Put yourself in the place of somebody who has never heard your story and who doesn't know you. If you're only creating the audiobook for the people who know you, that's a different thing. But that is rarely the case. And what I would like to encourage you to do is really try to step back and listen as if you're hearing your story for the first time. That can be so helpful. And then sort of revisiting this question of who did you write this book for? 
and who is the audiobook for. If your audiobook is primarily for your family, then it makes sense for it to be in your voice, no matter what, because a part of that legacy is hearing your voice telling your story. However, most memoirs are written for a broader audience. They're written to share your experiences so that others can benefit from them, so that they can join in your story and learn more about their own life, their own challenges and struggles, and their own victories. So being clear on who you wrote the book for and who the audiobook is for can be really valuable in this process of deciding who is the right voice for your memoir. Another scenario I want to mention that is a really great option for an author who would sort of like to record their own, but also don't feel like they are the right voice to do it or don't have the time to do it for any number of reasons, and that is having you as author narrate certain segments. For some, that might be an author's note at the beginning or end, or it might be acknowledgments if you want to have those recorded as part of your audiobook, or it might be that you have some kind of preface or introduction into your memoir that feels particularly like a letter to your listeners. These are opportunities where you can do a short bit of narration and feel like your voice is a part of it and still turn it over to a professional for the rest of the audiobook. This is an approach that we're increasingly using with our authors, and there are many ways to help support authors being able to narrate at home with either having a remote audio engineer working with them or having a home studio consultant who can give them the kind of information that they need. We can provide a studio recording kit and help make it happen in that way. So depending on the author's goals and technical savvy and what feels comfortable for them, there are several ways that we work with authors to help make this process smooth and easy and end up with a really great listening experience. I hope this has been helpful in helping you figure out whether you may be the right voice for your audiobook or not, and in making that decision. As always, if you have questions and if there's some way that we can be of service to you, please reach out to us at ProAudioVoices.com. We're here to help great stories come alive. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at AudiobookConnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at ProAudioVoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.